Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. I'm delighted to return to Robert B. Stone and from his amazing book, The Magic of Psychotronic Power. Robert B. Stone is one of my favorite authors that we read on this podcast, and I have read a variety of his books. He was author and co-author of over 80 published books, most notably on self-help and powers of the mind. We've covered the magic of psychotronic power, the power of miracle metaphysics, celestial 911, hypno-cybernetics, just so many amazing and wonderful books, and it's been a pleasure to read them. This is a really powerful chapter called Mind Over Money, Turning Psychotronic Power into Money Power. Robert B. Stone bridged the spiritual and the scientific in many of his writings, integrating what he had learned from Silva Mind Control and this one tuning into what he calls psychotronic power, that unique mind power that can be manipulated and controlled to create your reality mind over money, turning psychotronic power into money power. In this episode, you learn to use the alpha relaxed level of mind to trigger a flow of limitless money into your life. Because psychotronic energy is at work, the money can come from many different directions. You learn to focus this energy on your business and cause steady improvement without limit to climb the organizational ladder as high as you wish to go, to form a new source of income as many as you wish. Finally, you learn how to tap information that can enable you double or triple your wealth. A man from New Orleans has the uncanny ability to predict stock prices, commodity trends, and profitable investments. Ron Warmoth has helped hundreds to strike it rich in gold, oil, and minerals by locating rich veins in drilling areas. In California, he made six oil strikes worth $50 million for one client. The Missoula chapter of the Montana Mining Association used these words in a written testimonial to him. Ron Warmoth does possess an unusual and unique ability to locate veins and deposits of minerals. This unusual and unique ability is not one that Warmoth has trained or acquired. He claims that he was born with it and that he is therefore a natural psychic. This means he does not have to use an action plan to function mentally in amazing ways. Let me see a map of the area, he says. Then in a moment, he points with his finger here, and the minerals are there. You and I are not born psychics, at least to the extent that Warmoth is. We need to develop the ability. To do this, we need a system, a method. A Chicago couple need money. They have just learned a method to function psychically. To detect information at a distance and to make things happen for survival. Money is a survival material. They decide to apply what they have learned to win a lottery. They relax. They see themselves in a blue-framed mirror with many problems. When they change the frame of the mirror to white and see themselves winning a large amount of money in the lottery as their ticket number is chosen, each does this on his or her own. They repeat it several times a day for a week prior to the drawing. They win $300,000. The method they use is a Silva mind control method, but it does not matter whether you follow a prescribed commercial method or a psychotronic engineer's method. The energy of consciousness is real energy, and it delivers especially money. The subconscious mind computer extraordinary. Dr. Douglas Dean of the Newark College of Engineering studied some 500 successful businessmen and discovered they all rated high when tested on intuitive functioning. Many admitted to ignoring statistical reports and instead acting on strong hunches. Don't quote me on this, my stockholders may find out. The energy of thought is a very real creative energy. When you get right down to it, everything that man has created has indeed existed first at his thought level, usually in the form of mental pictures held while in a problem-solving mental posture. It leads to sketches, diagrams, blueprints, working drawings, buildings. Color it alpha. Now that we see the tremendous amount of information 
that can be stored by a computer, we are beginning to understand the mind better. The part of the mind that is not used in moment-to-moment -moment awareness is called the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind has three main functions which we can now identify. One, it keeps us alive. Two, it carries out instructions and three, it stores data. Keeping us alive means beating our heart, operating our lungs, digesting our food and causing all of the systems in our body to function. Our survival is linked to health, money and job, love, human relations. Decisions regarding these matters come predominantly from the computer-like subconscious mind, even though we believe we are thinking it over. Past programming is what makes most decisions for us. We buy a certain kind of bread, we brush our teeth twice a day, we like a certain type of person. Past conditioning or programming can make us radiantly healthy, abundantly wealthy, and eminently successful. It is also the cause of every curse known to man. Positive suggestions accepted while at alpha level become a part of programmed behavior instantly. A half century ago, Emile Q.A. had people in Europe and America look in the mirror and repeat over and over, every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. In time, many had noticeable results. However, he did not know about the alpha level of mind, the relaxed level. At alpha, you get immediate results. At this level of mind, the words or mental pictures go directly into the computer banks without any critical analysis, personal self-doubt, ands, ifs, or buts. Instruct the mind to produce money, and the brain neurons in charge of conscious thought begin inductive, deductive, and associative thinking processes. The neurons that work below the level of conscious thinking begin their processes too. They supplement the work of the conscious thought neurons, but they also are in touch with the brain neurons in other people who might help to solve the problem. Science is not sure as of now whether this is direct neuron communication or neuron to universal consciousness to neuron communication. But to the utilizer of this psychotronic energy, it does not matter any more than it matters to the flipper of a light switch, whether the energy is coming from batteries behind the wall or an area generator miles away. What happens when you instruct the mind to produce money? For millennia, man has been creating space in his own image. There is a god, or gods, or son of god. There are constellations that affect man's life, and down here on earth, there are gods of the volcano, of the ocean, of the trees, and of the rain. The concept of god can place any philosophy into a tight religious framework. Maybe for the purpose of communication, it would be best for us to free ourselves from the semantics of this and from stereotypes in speech or thought. Now, so freed, we can think in terms of space as an extension of ourselves. Suppose you want to move something with your hand. To do so, you need your hand's permission. It does not withhold such permission unreasonably, but if it is broken or numb or has a valid reason, it will refuse. Suppose space as an arm of yourself behaved similarly. This is a concept not too far removed from the God concept or the Edgar Mitchell continuum concept as an arm of yourself space would have to agree to act in your behalf. To get agreement from space, you'd have to ask or engineer that agreement in some other way. Asking can be prayer. Engineering of consent, as Bernays defines public relations, can be picturing at the alpha level, knowing it to be so a type of space relations. There is one oriental healer. The writer knows who chants or prays to every saint that was canonized, every angel that was ever named, every prophet that ever lived and asks for a healing. He touches all the bases, it takes him 15 or 20 minutes, but people are healed. There is a clue in this to contacting space or whatever space is itself permeated with. We give this space filler names, names of deities, angels, departed spirits. Maybe this has validity, but valid or not, this space filler becomes active with a consented to wish a consented to prayer, a consented to mental image. It is as if it is an arm of our consciousness. Are you ready to ask space for abundance? Then you are ready to treat space as intelligent, logical, reasonable, cooperative. 
This is the necessary attitude. For the following action plan to be productive, you need to purify your consciousness of intellectual clutter, mundane pressures, and people problems. You need to be as pure as space itself in order to be attuned to it. This takes a pre-action plan. Pre-action plan for becoming space-minded. Relax in a chair and breathe deeply. Imagine all impurities leaving your body and consciousness with every exhalation. Think of the space above where you are. Go into that space instantly. Imagine you can look back down at yourself sitting in the chair. Continue this trip into space, past the coast, above the planet, past this solar system, out of the galaxy. Feel love for this galaxy and all the billions of galaxies out there. Return instantly the way you came, knowing you are in closer touch with space. After completing this pre-action plan, you are ready for the main event, an action plan to win universal consent for abundance in your life. Action plan to attract more money. Go to your special room and sit under the skylight. Project your consciousness to outer space. Talk out loud to space in a reasonable way, covering in a logical way. The nature of your money problem? What amount of money would help you to solve the problems? Exactly what you will do with the money. Use your hands in talking and visualize the points you make in the conversation. Promise to give a sacrifice as a sign of your sincerity and respect. End your session, knowing at the moment of sacrifice the money will be on its way to you. Sacrifice by doing one or more of the following types of actions. Skip a meal. Make a donation to a cause. Feed some birds or animals. Why Alpha helps make psychotronic energy produce better for you. Why do mental images work better at the Alpha level? Why is usually a wasteful question, but it might be of value to give this one a try. As we retreat from physical activity and from the beta world of sensory input, we get a step closer to the way we were when we were born, a step closer to our source. This source of ours is really the space filler that acts as our extension. Maybe we have always been part of our source, part of the consciousness that fills space and still are. This is overly simple in its conceptualization and verbalization. Actually, the truth is unfathomable because it is like an infant without depth and without dimension. When Jesus was asked, what is truth? He stood silent. His silence spoke more than cold words. If we call the intelligence that permeates space the infinite and man the finite, then what life must be all about is that the infinite is becoming conscious of itself through the finite. Or as somebody once said, God became man so man could become God. Can it be that the thousands of years of man's philosophizing, that there is a spiritual, non-material, and intelligent basis to the universe as expressed in theological and metaphysical literature has not been in vain? We are consciousness. Our body is a place for consciousness to particularize. At a particularized plane we call the material world. Our consciousness is energy, able to attract the energy we call matter because it is closely related. Our consciousness is really part of a larger superconsciousness or cosmic consciousness, which works with us if and when we get its consent. To get this consent, we need to be in touch. To be in touch, we need to be closer to it at Alpha. How to use psychotronic power to improve your business. Go to Alpha, visualize, use your hands. Can you think of applications of this procedure that will help your business? Alfred G owned a shoe store. It was a marginal operation. Advertising did not seem to bring in more profit than it cost. Pedestrian traffic passing his store was fairly good, but they were the people who were on their way to or from work intent on getting there. He decided to use a triggering device to catch the attention of passers-by. Did he use a flashlight? A revolving shoe display? An animated contraption? No, he used a tiny circular piece of red paper glued to the bottom of the store window. Then he did some psychotronic work at home nightly. He went to his relaxed alpha level, entered his special room, 
visualized the store window wearing the red circle, seeing people's attention called to it. And if shoes were in need, their attention then turning to the shoes. At first there was no improvement, but he persisted for a week. Then people began to stop in front of his window. Some came in. Some of those who came in bought. Inside of another week, he recorded a 10% increase in his volume. Sidney P. was an insurance salesman. He canvassed prospects obtained through newspaper advertisements offering free booklets. His biggest problem was getting past the front door. People always had some excuse to ask him to come back some other time. He too harnessed psychotronic energy to improve his prospecting. Before starting out, he relaxed, went to his special room in his imagination. Then he saw himself being greeted at the door in a friendly way by people who needed his insurance services. He saw himself selecting the correct names and addresses for that evening's work people who would be home and who would listen to his proposal. Again, it took perseverance. But within a week, Sidney P. began to see a difference. Nothing spectacular, but in his business, just one good contact an evening pays off, and it paid off well for him. The difference in the approaches of the shoe retailer and the insurance salesman points up the need to adopt the application of psychotronic power in your business. One basic procedure acts as the framework. You relax. Moving into your alpha level of mind where brain waves slow down and become more synchronized with universal consciousness. Then you visualize your business activity in some constructive way. Here are some. A real estate agent sees for sale signs changed to sold. An artist sees his or her paintings radiating a light that touches people. A direct mail solicitor sees his own energy entering his mailing pieces and making them come alive. A restaurant owner injects his food with aliveness and visualizes the tables filled as people are attracted to his survival fare. A taxi driver sees himself continuously in the right place at the right time for picking up fares and beating the traffic. Calling the above the adapter, here's the action plan. Action plan to improve your business. Relax and go to your special room. Visualize your business. Use the adapter. End your session reminding yourself to repeat daily. Climbing the income ladder. George G. and I used to enjoy talking about numbers, like how if the Indians had taken their $20 when they sold Manhattan and invested it at compound interest, they might have more than Manhattan was worth today. I did not know it then. This was some 20 years ago, but George was doing some creative daydreaming about his own life using numbers. He figured if he continued to get raises from the plastics company he was working for at the same rate as the past few years, he would be an old man by the time he had the kind of money he felt he was worth. On the other hand, if he changed jobs every few years and got a 50% increase each time he did so, he would soon be in great financial shape. I began to wonder why George was changing positions so frequently. He and his family kept moving Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Boston, and his title became more and more impressive like vice president in charge of sales. It was at our last meeting a couple of years ago that George told me of his job switch visions and how well they were working out. Then I told George about psychotronic energy and how he was using it in his creative daydreaming to activate his visions. His reaction nonsense, I'm just a good salesman for myself. There's a difference between daydreaming and creative daydreaming. Seeing yourself wallowing in the lap of luxury is idle fantasy. Seeing yourself taking specific actions leading to specific results is the application of psychotronic energy, especially if you're comfortably relaxed when you're doing it. You can choose to climb the organizational ladder and attain more responsible, better paying positions in your present firm, or you can decide instead, as George G. did, to climb the income ladder wherever it may lead. Maria L. took a mind-controlling course that not only got her a good job in a school superintendent's office, but enabled her to become the personal secretary to the superintendent himself. Her images brought this about, and she kept telling the superintendent about psychotronic energy and how picturing positively at the alpha level could solve some of his problems. He just laughed this off and changed the subject, so Maria decided to use her psychotronic energy to get him. She saw him going into a conference room, she stopped him to remind him of the power of positive picturing. 
She saw him listen. Then he entered the room. She also saw him emerge happy. Within a few days, the superintendent told Maria to prepare the conference room. Some parents were coming. It would be a difficult morning, he predicted. It doesn't have to be, reminded Maria. When I get the room ready, relax, and see it all working out harmoniously. When the conference got underway behind closed doors, Mana interrupted her typing to relax and hold the same images in her mind while in her special room. In less than an hour, everybody emerged all smiles. The superintendent gave Maria a thumbs-up sign. It works, he said. Later she got a raise and he took the course. Norman Jay aspired to be a recording artist. He had a musical group. They practiced day in and day out. Occasionally, they got a club date. Then Norman learned how to tap psychotronic energy. He went to his special room and talked to an imaginary recording company. Three weeks later, the head of a recording company happened to hear the group at a club appearance and gave them a recording contract. Walter N., actor, wanted a role in South Pacific, about to open in a resort city where he loved to stay. He used his psychotronic techniques to see himself trying out for the second lead and getting it. He did. Millennia ago, Hermes, deified by both Egyptian and Greeks, taught secrets. They were so tightly kept that the term hermetically sealed still survives. One of the secrets was a practice that made dreams come true. It went like this. Relax. Picture your goal accomplished. Take a deep breath and project this picture onto the air as it enters your lungs, knowing that it will now enter every cell of your body. The technique still works. There are some of the myriads of ways that psychotronic energy works. It is activated by positive picturing at the alpha level. All you need to do is decide on your goal and create the mental pictures that properly reflect it. Remember, the picture you choose should not take something away from somebody else. Psychotronic energy so directed will be opposed not only by the individual in question whose consciousness also has energy but by universal consciousness working for the survival of everybody. Decide before you perform the next action plan just what your picture or pictures will be. They are again called the adapter. Action plan for a more lucrative livelihood. Relax and go to your special room. Visualize your present livelihood and the lifestyle it produces for you. Use the adapter and your session. Repeat once or twice a day climbing the organizational ladder. If your decision is to remain in your present company and to move up in responsibility and pay, then the procedure is similar to the above except your adapter picture is in an internal organizational setting. In a way, this is easier. There is more energy needed to move out and into another firm than is needed to move you up in the same firm. However, the problem of treading on other toes becomes more of a controlling factor. Your adapter image needs to be selected so as to invite the least amount of opposing psychotronic energy. Simply put, don't step on other people as you climb. Remember Olga Worrell's work with the cloud chamber. When disbelieving physicists viewed the experiment, nothing happened. The same is happening with similar observance of psychotronic phenomena by skeptical scientists. Things happen for scientists with expectant attitudes. If the expectation is that nothing will happen, very likely nothing happens. Your own expectations and belief are primary. But the resistance of another's consciousness is also primary. People do not need to stand in each other's way. Fear of the future, a poor self-image, and similar negative factors promote person-to-person -person competition, where instead both would benefit by genuine person-to-person -person cooperation. Do you see people standing in your way as you move up the organizational ladder? Or do you see them extending a helping hand to lift you up? The factor that makes the difference is whether your advancement promises to be a help to them or poses a threat. Your advancement would help them if your skills benefit their performance, your skills create new opportunities for them, your presence adds beneficence to administration, your increased responsibilities lessen their work. Your recognition by top management increases the chances for their recognition. These types of changes enlist their psychotronic help. You can move ahead without their help, but you may not find your power of psychotronics anywhere near miraculous if theirs is in opposition to you. 
The organizational chart is flexible. It can be altered to fit expediency. You do not need to see a name removed from a box in order to see your name at that step in the chart. You can add a box. Action plan to move up the organizational ladder. Relax in your special room. Invite in key people one at a time and explain why you feel the company can benefit if you're given more responsibility and a better paying post. Explain to people you may be bypassing. Also, one at a time, how you are no threat to them, but your advancement can be a boon to them ultimately. End your session knowing there has been understanding and agreement. Prepare physically an organizational chart showing a new box in it with your name on it with the appropriate chain of command, division, department, etc. Post it physically on the wall. Look at it frequently. Point to your box from time to time. How to obtain valuable information intuitively. We are now getting into one of the most difficult to explain aspects of human functioning. Information comes to you. It is not your information. That is, you have never learned it or experienced it, researched it or acquired it consciously, yet it proves to be correct information. How'd you get it? Can it be? It's your inner voice. It's your intuition. It's your higher self. It's the voice of the soul. It's the voice of God. Can you imagine any of the bespectacled scientists who are now daring to observe this in the laboratory accepting any of these hypotheses? In order to get a handle on just how we are able to pick up information by unorthodox means, it is helpful to know more about Cleve Baxter, the polygraph specialist who found that plants react to people's thoughts. Baxter took samples of his own blood and put them in separate containers. He put two silver electrodes into one of these containers, put the container in a shielded box, and hooked the electrode leads to an electroencephalograph. Whenever he thought of doing harm to one of the samples of blood, the other sample showed a violent reaction on the EEG. Mary Baker Eddy would certainly nod knowingly at that. The founder of Christian Science knew the importance of positive thoughts on the well-being of the body. But the real impact of Baxter's experiment lies in the fact that cellular communication took place at a distance. Medical research explains the ability of the blood to call on various bodily resources when needed by saying such communication is handled by chemostasis or chemical messengers. These may exist, but there are direct communications too, cell to cell, even over a 35 foot gap as in the Baxter experiment. Baxter has also demonstrated that yogurt cells communicate over such distances. This was an automated demonstration with milk being fed to one batch of yogurt at a specific time and causing excitement on the EEG measuring yogurt some 50 feet away. Since Baxter's work was announced, scientists all over the world have been working in this area. It is perhaps the field of research that is most demonstrative of the new discovery. The researcher is part of his own experiment. A plant reacts one way to Baxter, another way to a scientist with a different attitude. Consciousness cannot hide from consciousness. A cell is awareness. As minute as it is compared to man's awareness, it is still there. Your awareness as you read this or listen to this cannot be separated from the awareness of the cells of your body, from your family, pets, or plants. Should I say something especially loving that makes you feel mellow, your whole environment is affected. The opposite is true too. If an order is given to the neurons of your brain, urgent, need information to solve the following problem, competitor's product outselling ours, what can we do about it? Those neurons will resonate with the information either in someone's brain miles away, where that information resides, or in the universal consciousness, and the answer will come. It may come as a flash of insight. It may come as a dream. It may come through some coincidence. But come it will. Because the only requirement is a sincere desire. That sincere desire is what causes the brain neurons to resonate at the necessary frequency accurately. There are ways to accelerate the delivery of that valuable information without waiting what might be days for the intuitive flash, dream, or coincidence. Commercial mind courses teach the mental screen methodology, which involves going to your mental laboratory, which is similar to your special room, and seeing the required answer appear on an imaginary screen. This is quite effective, but takes the kind of special training which these courses offer. 
There is another way. It involves using symbology to induce the neurons to act within a specific time. One routine that is becoming increasingly popular is the tunnel technique. Action plan to obtain strategic information. Imagine you are in a small boat entering a large tunnel. Notice the pinpoint of light directly ahead. It is the other end of the tunnel. Repeat the problem you have and know that you will have the answer by the time you reach the light. Pretend you are drifting slowly along in the boat. Feel its gentle rocking. Hear the lapping waters. Wait patiently for the answer. Spend at least 10 minutes on this boat ride, aware of the monotony, occasionally repeating the problem and knowing as the light at the end of the tunnel approaches, your information will come. Watch the pinpoint of light grow bigger and bigger as you approach the end of the tunnel. End your session emerging from the tunnel knowing that if you do not already have the information, it is about to come. Martin N. was a captain in the Marines and took a course in psychotronics which I gave at the Kanohe Marine Corps base in Hawaii. I conducted the group in this action plan, not because any members had expressed the need for urgent answers, but just to demonstrate the methodology. As I completed my monotonous monologue about the lapping of the waters and the rocking of the boat, and reminded them the boat is now emerging from the tunnel, Captain N jumped up and hurried out of the room. We did not get the answer to why the sudden exit until the next session when he explained that his unit was in a competition that required complicated logistics. He asked for insight into this problem, and as the tunnel exercise ended, a unique solution had popped into his mind that required immediate implementation. It proved to be the key to his unit's exemplary showing. Another symbology that is also successful is going into a cave several times, first seeing pictures in the wall of your early life, then pictures of your present life, then of the situation you're in and that needs an answer, and finally of the answer itself. Or you can picture yourself standing in the front of a closed curtain. The answer to your problem is on the other side. State your problem, request the answer. See the curtain rise, creating a small opening in front of you. The opening increases in size. Finally, it is large enough and you step through to the answer. The Secret Combination to Untold Riches This chapter started off with two action plans, the first to become space-minded, the second to attract more money by getting the agreement of space. That fact is significant. It is as if there was a universal safe and there was no way to get at the real treasure unless you turned the dial in a special sequence. Those first two action plans, when used ahead of the subsequent action plans to improve your business or livelihood or get ahead on the organizational ladder, act as an open sesame to the universal store riches. You can storm the gates of that storehouse with physical energy alone, affirmations alone, and positive alpha picturing alone, but the results will be moderate compared to the flood that comes when you first become space-minded and engineer the consent of the universal consciousness. If you belong to a religion, this does not conflict with its teachings. You can in fact adapt the words used in these two space action plans so that they conform with your religious teachings. The concept of God can be substituted for space or for universal consciousness. Also the highest that a religion conceives, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, can be the intermediary in your behalf as you state your case. The American Indian said, the great spirit is everywhere. By whatever name, universal consciousness in which you live and have your being is all powerful, all rich. Those riches are your heritage. Activate your share. So we can pull some interesting teachings from this particular chapter. And the idea of identifying with space and activating space is a powerful one. Joe Dispenza uses it all the time in his meditations. For some reason, they found when they do the EEG monitoring of people that are doing meditations, the word space instantly changes the brainwave setting. And if you, in meditation, try to perceive or ponder space, you will have great success. Space is all around us. We're moving through space. And so when you focus on the space outside of your eyes or the space outside of your heart, it seems to activate this psychotronic energy that Robert Stone is talking about. 
So you can follow this technique. Call out to space. Now he gives a pre-action plan and an action plan. It's interesting with his action plan. He recommends that you contact space and that you make a sacrifice. It can be feeding an animal or donating money to somebody or skipping a meal. For some reason, when the mind makes a sacrifice, it seems to amplify the psychotronic power that Stone is talking about. I really like the technique that's mentioned at the end, and I may put that into a meditation, that you're on a boat in a long tunnel going towards the light as your problems or whatever it is you're focusing on comes about. Using these kind of techniques can really enhance your ability to gain intuitive information. It's mentioned several times here to go to your special room, something he mentions earlier on the book. You can check out my original episode on the magic of psychotronic power. But the idea is that you have a place that you can go to in your imagination when you go to meditate, a safe space, a special room, a room that's comfortable for you. And you can go into this room. It seems to amplify the effect of these techniques. So definitely check out the book, Magic of Psychotronic Power, Unlock the Secret Door to Power, Love, Health, Fame, and Fortune. I have the link in the description if you want to check out the book, and I will be reading some more Robert Stone here in the future. I am imagining with all the psychotronic power that I have, happiness, joy, wealth, and abundance for everybody listening. Go out into the day and have a fantastic day. I'd be so excited if you checked out my art website at www.newearth.art. Thank you so much for your support and listening, and welcome to the Reality Revolution.